Hi everybody. My name is Dr. Alexa Henderson. I'm a functional medicine, internal medicine physician. I've been practicing medicine for over 30 years, beginning off as a critical care nurse uh, many years ago. Um, subsequently went to medical school, became an internist, and became passionate about functional medicine, at which point I started a fellowship and uh, ended up opening my own practice prior to starting here at the Center for New Medicine. So I'm really happy to be here today to talk about adrenal dysfunction and adrenal fatigue, which is a common term um, that's put out there, but very few people understand specifically what that means. So just a little bit of background. The adrenal glands are two very small glands that sit on top of your kidneys. And there are two separate parts to your adrenal gland. There's the adrenal cortex and the adrenal medulla. The adrenal cortex secretes mineralocorticoids and glucocorticoids, which we consider cortisol. Uh, many of you have heard about cortisol and how imbalances in cortisol can cause a lot of problems with your body. Um, so that's one area of the adrenal gland that we'll focus on today. And the other area is the adrenal medulla. The adrenal medulla secretes norepinephrine, epinephrine, and really controls your nervous system um, when you look at sympathetic, parasympathetic, and all the balances that you need. So essentially, adrenal dysfunction starts over a long period of time, and really the primary issue is we live in a very stressful world. We have internal stressors and external stressors. So a lot of the internal stressors we face are relationships, you know, friends, family members with illnesses, um, different things we go through at work, and different interpersonal co conflicts that we have. On top of that, we have the physical stressors. So, you know, we live in a world filled with toxins. Um, we have to fight what we eat to make sure everything's clean. And there's just a lot of stress out in the world, in the news, in the media. Um, we put stress on our own bodies from time to time by exercising too much, not having enough sleep, and not achieving that balance that our bodies really need to have a, a normal, functional, balanced adrenal system. And so the adrenal gland controls a lot of the homeostasis in your body. And essentially what should happen on a normal day is when you wake up in the morning, you have a higher cortisol level. So cortisol is that let me wake up and get going kind of hormone. And in the morning it should be high and, and high enough for us to wake up so we're not overly fatigued. And then throughout the day, it should show a diurnal pattern, meaning it slowly decreases throughout the day. So if it's measured at 7 a.m., it's on the higher side. As we reach noontime, it slowly starts to decrease so that by the time we go to bed, we're actually ready to rest and ready to go to sleep. So the balance of this system with the HPA axis, which is the hypothalamic pituitary axis, is what we talk about when we talk about adrenal fatigue or adrenal exhaustion. And so what normally happens in a stressful world for stressful lives that we're living is initially our cortisols will be very, very high. Um, and that means we're just stressed all the time. It's often associated with sleep difficulties. It's often associated with other ailments, inflammation, high blood sugar, and a number of other things. And over time, if that adrenal hypercortisolism is not addressed, we can reach what we call adrenal fatigue. And so essentially, when you have that diurnal pattern that should show a downward slope throughout the day, starts off high, ends up low, eventually over time, if our bodies are exposed to extreme stress repetitively, our adrenals technically burn out. And what that means is that the connection between your brain and your adrenal glands becomes faulty and you have adrenals that have been secreting all the hormones and all the cortisol, and usually our brain is able to feed back and kind of calm that down. But with adrenal fatigue, essentially our body loses that ability to regulate, and the adrenals can burn out, and we can have adrenal fatigue. And what that means is that that beautiful slope that should be a diurnal pattern that's high in the morning and low at night can essentially flatline to a complete flat curve where we're not seeing any kind of variation. And when the body reaches that point, we're actually looking at a very dangerous situation because all sorts of diseases can ensue at that time, including cancers, heart diseases, and all sorts of other ailments. So in traditional medicine, it's not typically recognized that adrenal fatigue or adrenal dysfunction of any kind is really a cause of any illness. 
Um, oftentimes we see patients that are diagnosed with fibromyalgia, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome, and we see those as diagnoses all the time um, in traditional medicine. Without real treatments, you know, a lot of these patients end up really with nothing to offer. You know, just you've got fibromyalgia, here take an antidepressant, we'll treat your pain. Um, but really the root cause analysis is adrenal dysfunction, and that needs to be addressed in order for us to be healthy and, and to get better. Um, all these labels of fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, are really just masks for the underlying problem, which is the adrenal gland. So the adrenal gland is also critical to balance with the thyroid and hormonal problems. And I describe it like it's a triangle, so adrenal, thyroid, hormone. So a lot of people that have thyroid problems that are, we are trying to treat, if they have adrenal problems that aren't addressed, the thyroid won't ever get fixed. And the same with hormones. It's a symphony that all three of them need to work together. So really the following symptoms are what you'd worry about with adrenal fatigue. So loss of appetite, extreme fatigue in the morning, dizziness, extreme fatigue at night, loss of sex drive, allergies, any kind of inflammation, chronic pains, joint aches, things like that. If you have any of those signs and symptoms, you could have adrenal dysfunction. And luckily, in functional medicine, there are ways to treat this. So the first treatment is accurate diagnosis. And that's where the challenge comes in, that in a traditional doctor's office, you may get diagnosed with something else that isn't really the root cause analysis of, of what's going on. So it's important to have your cortisol levels measured, and that can be done in the morning via blood. But the more accurate way is a four-point salivary cortisol test that measures your saliva for cortisol levels throughout the day. Because we want to make sure that you have that balance and that pattern where you're waking up in the morning refreshed and going to bed at night tired enough to sleep. So we start off with testing and in conjunction with thyroid testing and hormone, um, again, we have to look at all three since they're so interlinked um, with regards to overall health and they work together as a symphony. So with high cortisol, um, you know, essentially that's going to affect your blood sugar, it's going to impact your sleep, it's just going to make you feel stressed and you're going to feel it inside um, and you're going to notice changes in your body. Um, the good news for that is there is treatment available with adaptogenic herbs, they're just Chinese herbs, ashwagandha, rhodiola, and that kind of calms your nervous system down and just brings down the level of stress physiologically to help your adrenals be more functional. And then the other thing is just mindfulness of, of high stress levels. And you know, sometimes days can go by when we don't feel like we're stressed, but internally our bodies are, are really under duress. So mindfulness, deep breathing, even just deep breathing will help lower that cortisol level and also balance the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. I think that's another small piece to this is we've got our sympathetic nervous systems that are fight or flight and parasympathetic, which is rest and digest. So we wanna make sure that there's a balance between the two of them to keep our bodies in homeostasis. So with the treatment of high adrenal, um, you know, which we very, very effectively do with ashwagandha, rhodiola, and Chinese herbs, um, on the other end of the spectrum, there has to be a treatment as well for hypoadrenal or adrenal burnout or adrenal fatigue. So the number one goal would be that we never reach that point of adrenal fatigue where the body is so tired fighting that it's actually given up. But in the event that it has, there are effective treatments available and they include adrenal adaptogens. So those are Chinese herbs as well and things like licorice that boost up your adrenal function and give you that energy back. Um, in conjunction with, in some extreme circumstances, uh, we could get to the point of adrenal insufficiency where you really don't have any adrenal function, in which case cortisol, um, hydrocortisone, and DHEA, which is a major driver of, of the adrenal hormone system, um, come into play and we can supplement, supplement you with, with those medications to keep you going. But I'd say that in summary, the overall goal is to be cognizant that this is a problem, to be aware of the stress that you're under, and to be willing to give yourself some TLC to really take time to address that, um, to be mindful of your feelings, your emotional conflicts, toxins in your world, toxic relationships, and other things that might be impacting you negatively. 
and to pursue functional medicine to make sure that you're being properly diagnosed and that we're able to measure the adrenal gland, give you the proper supplementation, and then treat you accordingly with all the other balances that we have in, in check with the hormones and the thyroid. So in summary, adrenal dysfunction, adrenal fatigue is preventable, it's treatable, it's very common, it's underdiagnosed, it's misdiagnosed, but with functional medicine, there's hope um, for us all to feel better in a very stressful world. So thank you very much for your time today. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave it down below and we'll look forward to being in touch with you. Thank you.